Over the period of his political career, John Mahama has demonstrated his intuitive ability to plan with the future in mind. He's a generational thinker and a positive-minded policymaker. Peaceful and tolerant, John Mahama's character has always been known as one of self-control, of a peaceful nature, and has truly walked in the footsteps of the late John Evans Atta Mills. His ability to calm waters, keep relationships, and manage delicate national issues is unrivaled. Resilient. There are countless examples of situations where John Mahama stood his ground on unpopular but necessary policies for the sake of the future of the country. He is tough beyond measure and has stood the test of time and yet ready for more. Communicator. Mahama's eloquence and communication skills transcend the upper class of society. His message also sinks deep among the grassroots as well as the rural folk of our dear nation. Unifier. John Mahama is an all-round team player and a group builder. The makeup of his ministerial and public office appointments cuts across ethnic, cultural, social, ideological, and even political divides. Gender Equalizer. Mahama's first term saw one of the closest bridges in the gender equality gap. He is a strong believer in competence over gender and a supporter of women in high office and public positions. Religious. Mahama is a Christian by faith and a member of the Ringway Assemblies of God Church and associated with the Men's Fellowship Wing. He is committed to God's Word and teaches it among his peers and fellowship members. Success Driven. One of John Mahama's major traits is his determination to see a project through. He's meticulous by nature and pays extra attention to detail. Legacy. A chunk of Mahama's achievements are literally visible for all to see and can be identified in all major sectors. Housing. Health. Education. transport, among many others. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing John Dramani Mahama. afternoon my brothers and sisters and I wish all of you and all Ghanaians watching us from the comfort of their homes or offices I wish everybody a happy new year 
Next year, 16 January by this time, Inshallah, by the grace of God, if your guess is as good as mine, we would have started vetting our cabinet. <laughs> I want to thank you and congratulate all of you as members, sympathizers, and admirers of the National Democratic Congress for the progress we continue to make as we plan, implement, and move forward with determination and commitment towards Victory 2020. We have gathered again as one big, exciting umbrella family to launch our party's e-payment platforms and adopt a constituency, adopt a branch fundraising campaign. This launch begins a process which will allow for broad participation in the financing of the NDC and its activities. The electronic payment platform will allow all Ghanaians, not only registered members of the NDC, to contribute, no matter how small, to the running of the NDC and our campaign in election 2020 and beyond. Ladies and gentlemen, over the years, Many have expressed some misgivings about the opacity that characterizes political party financing in Ghana. I believe that this new transparent and accountable electronic initiative will go a long way to dispel these concerns. We are demonstrating clearly that we in the NDC believe in openness and transparency in the way the affairs of our party are handled and we are ready and willing to do better in our next government come 2021 by the grace of God Almighty. <laughs> to this end, we pledge to uphold the highest standards of accountability in the way the funds mobilized from this initiative will be disbursed and utilized. Detailed records of contributions will be kept and financial reports will be rendered to the Functional Executive Committee and the National Executive Committee regularly. For donors who wish to remain anonymous because of the vengeful nature of this current administration, I wish to assure them of the strict confidentiality and protection of their identities. This fundraising activity will strictly be in compliance with the Political Parties Act 547 and the Electoral Commission Act 655. Ladies and gentlemen, I also believe that the broad masses of our people will actively donate to a cause that they believe will lead to the rescue of the ship of state, which the Akufuado administration is steering into a bottomless pit. Ghanaians are dissatisfied with the corruption, nepotism, dishonesty, hardship, job losses, insincerity, insensitivity of the Akufuado administration. As a social democratic party, we have a solemn responsibility, a responsibility to continue to develop alternatives and credible policies that make a radical departure from the status quo. Thankfully, we have begun this process already through our sector policy working groups and our manifesto committee. Soon the manifesto committee will be coming round to the regions to meet with you and solicit your opinions for what I call the People's Manifesto. On my part, I will continue to provide the illuminating and transformative vision which will guide the ongoing policy development process. Ghanaians look forward to the NDC stepping, and I repeat, Ghanaians look forward to the NDC stepping up to the plate and wresting power from this government that has promised so much but has delivered so little. A government that has benefited from so much in terms of resources but has so little to show. 
a government that has reinstated the culture of silence, closing radio stations and media houses, intimidating journalists, and persecuting critics of government. A government that pledged to protect the public purse, but has opened it up for systematic looting and abuse through profligacy and ostentatious expenditure. A government which said it will provide inclusive governance, but has ended up practicing the worst form of nepotism and state capture. A government that is all too quick to collapse Ghanaian businesses when other cost-effective options could have been used to correct the challenges in the financial sector. A government that is cooking the books to show economic numbers that are better than the reality. Debts and arrears are being hidden as footnotes and treated below the line and off budget. The recent IMF report that the minority, honorable minority leader referred to has discovered these numbers and have included them in the budget numbers and therefore show a deficit of 7% rather than the artificial 4.7% that this government has continued touting. Ladies and gentlemen, a government that has divided this nation more than ever in the history of our country. I can assure you, my fellow countrymen and women, that this is a responsibility that we in the NDC working with you will take seriously and we will step up to the plate and face these challenges frontally. We will fix the problems and put Ghana back on track. We will fix the problems and we will put Ghana back on track to ensure fair distribution of opportunities for all Ghanaians and not just a few family and friends. I am ready, very ready, to work with you, the people of Ghana, to rescue our country from this abyss. My fellow Ghanaians, my fellow Akatamansonians, already we have a robust set of policy proposals that will advance the progress of our nation and propel its development at a much quicker pace to bring development and relief to our people. Towards the end of last year, I put forward a few of these propo uh, policy proposals to address some of the most pressing problems as a country when we are sworn into office on January 7, 2021. And I wish to share a few of them with you. Among others, I spoke about making technical and vocational education in Ghana free of charge. I note that this has generated a positive reception from Ghanaians. Let me take this opportunity to assure all Ghanaians that our program of technical and vocational education are comprehensive and far-reaching. The free TVET program would operate at all levels from second cycle to tertiary. <laughs> to be clear, students undergoing technical and vocational education at the secondary cycle and tertiary level will pay no fees. It is important to note that as we speak, only 48 TVET institutions under the Ghana Education Service currently benefit from the free SHS program. The remaining 240 technical and vocational educational training institutions in the country have not been catered for. Under an NDC government, all these institutions will be brought into the free education scheme. because we must not pay lip service to technical and vocational education. Indeed, technical and vocational education is the training 
that will move this country to the next level. And that aspect of education requires even more investment than uh, uh, the current um, uh, uh, areas that we have. And so we will bring TVET on board and let them also enjoy free education so that we can create the middle level non-power that is needed for industry and business. This is the critical gap my initiative intends to address. Additionally, we intend to realign all TVET institutions and firmly place them under the Council for Technical and Vocational Education and Training, COTVET, an existing agency of the Ministry of Education. In addition, the NDC administration will build and operationalize new public uh, universities, which would have campuses in each of the six newly created regions. The new universities will focus on technical, vocational, and engineering programs. Our TVET program has been well considered to address two main challenges. The first is to fix the imbalance and the gap that exists between the top and bottom level manpower requirements, especially those with technical skills. It is designed to produce a cadre of young people with cutting edge technical knowledge, which we are in need of in many sectors of our economy, including the oil and gas sector. The second challenge our TVET program will help address is the worsening unemployment situation by providing our young people with the requisite skills sets that enable them to chart a path of self-employment instead of only relying on government for employment. Yes, our government will continue to provide jobs as well, but we will augment the provision of skills that guarantee self-employment. The next NDC administration will also roll out a national apprenticeship program targeting some 200,000 out-of-school youth. These include uh, hawkers, street hawkers, kayaye, and other young people, homeless uh, people. And it will help them to acquire diverse skills and vocations to be competitive in the current job market. The targeted youth who will be drawn from all over the country and to be coordinated through the Metropolitan, Municipal, and District Assemblies will be trained at the expense of the state and provided with internationally recognized certification. <laughs> Upon completion of their training, they shall, in addition to their certification, be provided the necessary startup kits and support services to aid a dignified entry into the world of work. We shall, as I've already announced also, abolish the requirement of College of Education graduates to undertake compulsory national service. We shall reintroduce automatic promotion for teachers. We shall reintroduce automatic posting of teachers. and we shall scrap the teacher licensure exams. Since I made this announcement, I have heard members of the current administration say that licensure exams were introduced by us. To be clear, when the issue of licensing teachers came up, we did not seek and never sought to use exams as the mode of licensing teachers. We will remove the exam requirements for licensing and enhance the quality and robustness of the training received at the colleges of education and incorporate the certification process within this framework. We will abolish the double track.
and ensure we will abolish the double track and ensure that we increase the contact hours between teachers and students in order to adequately prepare them for the West African Secondary School Certificate Examination. We will not bypass questions for the students. The first projects, the first infrastructure projects to which we will uh, uh, we'll allocate money and fast track are the completion of the 200 community day secondary schools. We will also build additional new e-blocks in dense in dense urban areas where there's a high demand for secondary education. And as I said in my Facebook Live program, we will build some of the e-blocks on the lands on which existing secondary schools are currently, so that we are able to immediately increase admissions in the catchment area by at least 50%. And I give an example. West Africa Secondary School services the Adenta Medina area. They have excess land. We will build an E block on that land that can take 1,500 students. And that will increase the number of children who can access secondary school in the Medina Adenta area by another 1,500. Ladies and gentlemen, during my Facebook Live session, I made the point that I'll lead a government that takes on board the concerns of its citizens, one that operates on the basis of integrity and dignity and truth and honesty. I also indicated that there was a need to cut out waste and ostentation from government. And I wish to reiterate that position by reaffirming my decision to reduce drastically the number of ministers and ministries. And just to cite a few, the Ministry of Aviation, Railways, and Transport will be remerged into one ministry. This was a ministry that was previously manned by two women, and yet they did more work in the area of transport than three ministries manned by six ministers. As I said already, the sanitation ministry is going back to local government. and all the other unnecessary ministries, Ministry of Public Procurement, Ministry of Mon Monetary and Evaluation, Ministry of Planning and whatever, Ministry of Business Development, Ministry of Presidential Special Initiatives, all those ministries are going to be scrapped. As I said, President Akufuado can dispense with more than 40 ministers, and it will not make any difference to the lackluster performance that they currently are showing. To cut back on the entitlement culture among political leadership, I'll carry out further reforms in order to protect the public purse better. And one of the immediate measures we'll take is to put an immediate and permanent end to the purchase of duty post vehicles by political appointees. Now listen to what we'll do. We'll work with the banks and financial institutions to enable appointees access credit so that they can acquire vehicles of their own. Government vehicles will remain government vehicles. 
and will only be disposed of when they are unserviceable and be disposed of through a transparent process. Furthermore, as I stated already, we will work towards bridging the gap between Article 71 office holders and other categories of the public sector workers. Fellow Ghanaians, these are just a few of the many proposals we'll be tabling before you. There are many, 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 many more innovative policy proposals that will move our nation to the next level. We will offer clear options in this electioneering period. We are not going to be ambivalent. We are going to offer clear options. And we will, in the coming weeks and months, make more public and far-reaching policies that will meet the expectations of our people. As I have stated before, this election will shape our future and destiny as a country. And it is one that we must take very seriously. We in the NDC stand prepared to wage a campaign of ideas that enhance the process, and we shall eschew insults and violence. And it is our hope that our opponents will do the same. My brothers and sisters, our chairman made us stand up to observe a minute's silence for members of our party who have passed away, but also for 34 of our compatriots who are said to have died in a dastardly road accident on Tuesday near Comenda Junction in the central region. I'm deeply saddened and concerned about this accident. On behalf of the National Democratic Congress, I wish to express our sincerest condolences to the grieving families and pray that the injured fully recover. We stand with you in this moment of difficulty and grief, and may God grant those who have passed peaceful repose. I also urge all stakeholders to commit to ending the spate of accidents on our roads. It is important that we continue to promote responsible driving and augment our road safety campaigns, but the greater responsibility is on us, the drivers and other road users. Many of the road accidents that occur are avoidable the latest disaster happened at a spot where the road network is good. There are some major roads that need widening. Yes, and the NDC has already announced its plans to do that. These include the Accra Aflao, Accra Kumase, and Accra Cape Coast roads, which will all be dualized. Priority will also be given to the early completion of the Eastern Corridor Road. My brothers and sisters, let us work together to win 2020 and to rescue our drowning country. An important step towards Victory 2020 is the aggressiveness and dedication that we attach to our work at the branch levels of the party. I congratulate all those who have stepped forward to help the branches with resources and the constituencies and with resources and ideas and to connect with the voters. We can only win the elections from the constituency and the branch level and not by sitting in Accra or rushing back to our people only when we need them. Ladies and gentlemen, as I've said before, it is no use following me the flag bearer around. That is not what will win us the election. What will win us the election is the work that we do in our own constituencies and our branches. And so I urge everybody to go to his constituency and branch. Not once, not twice, but go consistently and identify with the executives and support them morally and materially to win the elections at that level. And if we win in your constituency, we win in your branch, we win in his branch, her branch, we will win the election 2020, hands down. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, fellow Akatamansonians, on this note, I'm delighted to declare
the NDC e-payment platforms and adopt a constituency and adopt a branch fundraising campaigns duly launched. And I urge all of you to support your constituencies and your branches. On election day, I expect that everybody will go back and sit as a party agent at your branch. From 7 a.m. in the morning till the last presidential ballot is counted and the, and the pink sheets have been filled and you sign before you leave the polling station. And all of us, ex-appointees, everybody is going back as a party agent. And so, ladies and gentlemen, Yibima, Kitwebianswa, whatever everybody has, let us all contribute to make this fundraising a success. May God bless us all.